really is uh, a great pleasure to be here in, uh, in Chicagoland. Uh, we've done, uh, my company's done very well here in terms of investments, and uh, it's a terrific city. Um, let me just start by saying, you know, the secret to a, a good uh, sermon is to have a good beginning, a good end, and then make sure that those two are as close together as possible. <laughs> and uh, so that was George Burns, by the way, not me. Um, let me start by saying in public, uh, public markets, public financial markets, perceptions uh, become reality. In our business, in private equity, it's just the other way around. Um, reality becomes perception. Uh, at Carlisle, we, uh, we try to do what we say we're going to do. Uh, we try to keep our word, uh, the reputation of our firm and our partners um, intact, both uh, investor and uh, operating partners. Uh, so our organization really runs on uh, very one, one very simple uh, and encompassing value, and that is truth. Um, and through that, many other virtues uh, become manifest, uh, integrity, honesty, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, living the core values is an important uh, part of our daily life at Carlisle. Uh, and that then takes perception to a different level. Uh, it becomes a, a brand. It becomes a reputation and then a brand. And with a brand, you start winning the game of inches. Uh, it's a way of doing business that people can expect and admire. It, uh, it gets you the first meeting. Uh, it uh, makes you the most credible next best buyer of a management team. And occasionally you get a little bit better rate on your financing. Um, <laughs> but it all starts really with personal values. Organizations, of course, are the sum of the individuals involved, and, you know, I've been very fortunate uh, to be a founder at Carlisle uh, and able to uh, project some of my own core values along with uh, my partners. I'm, I'm fortunate to have two wonderful partners, Bill Conway. Uh, he's Catholic, uh, has the same sort of values that I do. And then, of course, David Rubenstein, who Pope John Paul II would have called one of our older brothers. <laughs> and uh, so we've, uh, we've, tried to set, uh, we've tried to set the bar high, um, more uh, on the basis of what's right and wrong, rather than what's illegal and legal. Because uh, what's illegal or legal is a, an ever-moving target, um, impacted by social mores, government legislation, legal interpretations, et cetera, et cetera. So, it's a challenge for today's businessman and woman. Um, in a world of rapidly changing technology and uh, esoteric financial instruments and uh, globalization, it's a real challenge. You know, my mother once, uh, once told me that uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You know, it's hard enough to navigate uh, a road, but uh, it's even more difficult when it's constantly under construction. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, we try to keep our people walking in the middle of the highway. Um, sometimes uh, in, in today's world, uh, we've become, society's become so cynical that actions uh, taken by uh, men and women in the business arena are defined only after the fact, defined uh, almost solely on uh, the acceptability of results. The stock is up, everything's fine, everybody's ethical, the stock is down, there's a crook somewhere in the boardroom. And so, uh, you know, regardless of intent, uh, we like to keep uh, people on the straight and narrow. Um, this rush to install heightened corporate uh, governance rules uh, and protocols like Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, some of the new exchange rules, et cetera, you know, those, those are seen by some as panaceas uh, to managerial comportment, fiduciary care, but uh, the fact remains that uh, you, you can build the most elaborate set of golden pipes, but if you're still running sewage through it, it still leads to the drain, to the sewer. So, uh, you know, I'm fortunate uh, 
that I have found uh, in the last couple of years the opportunity uh, to project these core values in the context of my business career through the Lumen Institute. I think uh, the mission of formation of good leaders through character, faith, and, uh, and leadership qualities is a beautiful and uh, perfect compatible uh, uh, issue with respect to uh, my daily life uh, and my core values uh, uh, in my personal life. And, uh, you know, at our first board meeting, I was elected treasurer of Lumen. And um, Father John Connor, who's seated over here, uh, told me that, you know, uh, the, uh, the chairman and CEO of our organization is the Holy Spirit. And I said to Father John, I said, you know, I got to tell him that uh, he's going to have to sign a certificate under Sarbanes Oxley. <laughs> and so, uh, we, uh, we continue on uh, to try to do the best we can in that regard. At Carlisle, our corporate culture uh, isn't an important thing. It's the only thing. And uh, we uh, reiterate on an annual basis at our employee retreat what we expect in our people. And, you know, I, I thought maybe today I'd give you a few snippets of what we say there. Uh, as an example, we say, uh, Always obey the law, but don't hide behind it. Meaning, don't get cute, for example, on a sale and purchase agreement and leave a hole where you could drive a truck through just so that you can argue what it meant when things get bad. Be upfront about your intentions and stick to them. Do the right thing when the right thing exists. I. Uh, I once was on the uh, selection committee for the White House Fellowship, and uh, I asked one of the candidates, uh, what do you think of the uh, jury system in the United States, the health of the jury system? This was a law professor at American University, and he said, you know, uh, the courtroom is theater, and whoever has the best lawyer is going to win, and it's the challenge uh, for the judge to grab the truth from between two lies. Um, I was stunned by that cynicism, but, but I remembered uh, Ben Franklin's quote that said, uh, God works wonders now and then. Behold, a lawyer, an honest man. <laughs> so uh, the next um, item is uh, listen to your, to your conscience. Listen to the voice within. But your conscience really needs to be, uh, needs to be informed. Uh, so when you think you know what is right, uh, check with somebody whose wisdom you admire. Uh, for example, at Lumen, you know, I mentioned, uh, I don't know if you saw in the clip, uh, mentioned the Lumen advisor. We have the one-on-one uh, -on -one advice from our chaplain, which is very, very helpful. We also have a leadership circle, for example, where executives get together on a monthly, bi-monthly basis and talk about issues in their day-to-day -day life. Just a sounding board uh, to get a feel for uh, uh, how to handle things and, and whether you're you know, observing things from the right perspective and handling things appropriately. Some people feel you know, more guilt than others. Uh, of course, you know, uh, growing up Catholic, I am fairly well endowed with that. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I, uh, I'm a good beneficiary. Uh, but there are many instances where you can see things in, in a different light. For example, let me give you a hypothetical. You're driving up uh, the street and you're looking for parking space and there's a car in front of you pulling out of a parking space. And you say, gee, there's some time left on the meter. Why don't I just pull in? And, uh, and use the meter. Well, that's one choice. Another choice is that you probably should put a quarter in there because it's a privilege to park and people should pay to park. The other thing is you could beep the horn. You could chase the guy down the street and say, hey, you have 15 minutes left, here's a quarter. So there's a lot of ways to look at it. We tell our people it's okay to be wrong so long as you're upfront about it, you don't deny it, you don't lie about it. It's okay to make a mistake. Fourth, stay out of ethical debt. Emerson 
quote, moral qualities rule the world, but in short distances the senses are despotic. Uh, I was, uh, I was uh, driving to uh, church. I wasn't driving. My mother was driving to church when I was about, I guess, about 10 years old. And we were at the corner of Jefferson and Monroe. And she turned to me and she said, Dan, Danny, what she called me. Oh, I must, I must tell you that I was raised by uh, my mother, single mother, single parent. She turned to me and she said, have any of your uncles talked about the facts of life with you yet? I said, no, not really. Why? Well, she said, you know, uh, I'm not really equipped to do that right now, but I can tell you, always think about what you're going to, uh, how you think you're going to think about what you did today when you wake up tomorrow. Never mortgage your future for what you're doing today. And so we tell, we tell our people the same thing. Uh, don't get into ethical debt. Don't say yes to somebody because you expect them to return the favor. Uh, that ends up in poor decisions, and that ends up in compromises that you don't want to make. Five, sweat the small stuff. Um, we had a situation where we were teaming up with a, uh, another private equity firm in bidding for a large automotive parts company. We made an agreement, pre-agreement, that we would consult with one another vis-a-vis -vis the seller before we made any decisions on price, on terms, et cetera, et cetera. At the very last minute, it looked like we were going to lose the deal. Our partner went ahead and uh, agreed to a price increase without consulting us, and we walked from the deal. We walked from the deal on the principle um, that we wanted to show our people what we expected in our partners, and we wanted to show the industry the value we place in partnership. The increase was less than 1%. But, and by the way, the, the deal turned out to be terrific, but I think we made a statement to our people. React to smells. Uh, pay attention to uh, sort of the occasion of sin. Uh, you know, there's, there, there, there are sins and there are occasions of sin. And, uh, you know, we tell our people it's more, it's not so much what you do, and sometimes it's even more important how you do it. So, you know, try to stay in the middle of the road. Uh, try to feel good about your activities, uh, your choices and be open about them. Mind more than your own business. Be intolerant uh, of low standards from people around you. Uh, in doing uh, so, you know, you learn, uh, you learn to live with shades. And we tell our people, look, just because somebody has a difference of opinion doesn't mean he's wrong or right or evil. Um, so be open-minded, but be open-minded on the basis that everything is on the table for consideration. Eight, bear the blame for your own behavior. You know, morals are personal. Uh, you can't delegate them on the theory of groupthink. Uh, you can't say that you're doing something incorrectly, improperly, illegal by saying you were just following directions. And uh, two wrongs don't make a right. So uh, we tell people to stand up when they made a mistake uh, and be open and honest about it. And you know, this world is forgiving in many cases. Number nine, don't just talk the talk, walk the walk. We have a, uh, an award we give to our uh, people once a year, to a person once a year who has exemplified uh, all the best of uh, core values that we teach uh, at Carlisle. It's called the One Carlisle Award, and it's given to a, profession, a professional that has exemplified integrity, trust, uh, and professional, a willingness to help uh, his colleagues unselfishless, uh, unselfishly. And uh, we make a big deal about it. Uh, and we go into great detail on why this person won the award. We want all of our 450 investing professionals to understand that that's the kind of person that will lead the firm in the next generation. And 10, um, when all is said and done, the buck stops with the individual. 
And I would say this, um, individuals can't really negotiate right and wrong, especially when, when they're negotiating with God and in the con context of their own conscious, conscience. You know, a young man uh, once, once asked God, uh, how long is a million years? And God said to him, uh, uh, it's about a second in your time. And so he said, well, how much is a million dollars? And God said, well, it would be about a cent in your uh, currency. The man thought for a while and said, well, I think I can do something here. God, uh, can I have a cent? God said, sure, just a second. 